everybody, welcome to 3 Minute Thursdays, your source of animal rights news and gossip all packed into a short, sweet three minutes on everyone's favorite day. Episode 121, here we go. Do you remember back in like 2020 when Anonymous for the Voiceless lost $1.5 million in funding essentially because they weren't being like fully transparent as to how much money there was and how it was being spent? Well, now we know. Kind of. Their fiscal year 2020 financial report is finally out, and not only does it raise eyebrows and questions, it lets us know just how much the leadership is making. All right, everybody, if you like what you're seeing, please subscribe, hit that bell notification, like button, Facebook, Instagram, uh, Twitter, all that stuff. It's a great time. Have you guys been listening to the podcast? I'm loving this thing. Radicals and Revolutionaries, Tyler and I, we just put out episode five with uh, Roger Yates, former press officer. He's talking about being the press officer. He's talking about going to prison with Ronnie Lee. He's talking about being on the run, all sorts of cool things. Before that, two episodes with Ronnie Lee, co-founder of the Animal Liberation Front and Band of Mercy. We also made some pretty cool hooded sweatshirts with uh, the artist Praxis to kind of celebrate that first Band of Mercy liberation back in 1974 of six. Uh, guinea pigs if you want yours check it out radicalsrevolutionaries.com all that jazz down below of course the patreon came in big this month we gave six thousand four hundred ninety six dollars which still blows my mind to a rispay or is i'm probably pronouncing that wrong a rispay animal sanctuary in texas they uh, had a few tornadoes touch down close by messed up their barns messed up some of their housing and we are helping them rebuild if you want to be part of that, you can do so for as little as two bucks a month. That gets you a vote as to where the money goes and also allows you to nominate those who we vote on. And we give all the money, 100% of the money, to whoever wins at the end of the month. Simple as that. It's called transparency. But we'll get to that in a little bit. Can I do some real quick updates I'm excited about and are worth mentioning? Fred, is that okay? Okay, we got the go ahead from Fred. Thank you very much. So it is official as Ireland signs into law their ban on fur farming, making them the 15th country in the European Union to do so. That is very exciting. Here in the US, Lauren Nasrallah, which I'm also probably mispronouncing, who is a college student in Massachusetts, just got a ban on the sale of fur passed in Plymouth, Massachusetts. Amazing news, nice job. Massachusetts is just steamrolling the fur industry single-handedly, tip of the hat. If you're looking for ways to plug into the fight against fur, a coalition to abolish the fur trade is having a week of action against their international target, Louis Vuitton, from April 18th to the 24th. People are often like, protesting fur in the spring and summer? Well, what's the point? Critical time to be protesting against fur. You know how there's like these amazing groups run by like one or two amazing people and you just never really have heard them that much because these people have zero ego and they just like get the job done? That's Michael and Karen Budke and their organization Stop Animal Experiments Now or SANE. They started this organization back in 1996 and they do really important work, including getting new bills signed into law this week that will protect cats and dogs. This happened after they exposed Invigo Labs, and these laws will potentially and hopefully have a big impact on their on uh, Invigo's ability to operate. Tofurky won their day in court as Louisiana's law preventing Tofurky and others from using terms like burger and sausage on their plant-based items was ruled unconstitutional and a restriction of free speech. So let the plant-based foods roll out. So enjoy these victories, celebrate them, and then get back into action. Okay, some people may remember this drama that was circulating around Anonymous for the Voiceless back in September of 2020. And if not, you know, feel free to check out my hot take here for all, for all the details. But I'll give you the quick and dirty of it. A big time donor pledged 1.5 million US dollars to Anonymous for the Voiceless to be doled out over the course of a fiscal year. That means the organization was gonna be getting about $100,000 every three weeks. But at the same time, it was brought to the donor's attention that Anonymous of the Voiceless didn't really have a proper organizational structure. There wasn't really any financial transparency. And, and there was some sketchy behaviors and, and, and opinions being openly tossed around by various AV leadership, like stuff about how the white man was the most oppressed person in the animal rights movement, and how trans people wanting to have their pronouns be respected was somehow laughable, how the movement for black lives in the US was a wasted effort because, well, it's just not as bad as you think it is. Paul and Assal would end up firing some of their staff because of that and, and trying to walk back some of those statements, but really the, the damage was done. The donor also thought it would be a good idea for him to create a board of directors for Anonymous for the Voiceless for whatever reason, and also for some odd reason, he sent in Joey Carbstrong to take a look at Anonymous for the Voiceless Financials and report back. Because when I think of sound finances, I think of Joey Carbstrong. Which, and here's the, the part I, I, I do agree with Paul Nassau, I would have also said, 
hell no, that is not happening. You do not control my board of directors and Joey Carbstrong is not making financial decisions for us. And here is my gentle reminder to any organization that is planning to go the same route as AV did and allow a multi-billion dollar venture capitalist be the sole funder and ultimately control all the pieces of your grassroots organization, don't. Just don't do it. That's really the lesson here. If you're engaging in grassroots organizing, be grassroots. If you're looking for funding, which is totally legitimate, you should, but don't turn over all the power to one person, particularly when that one person has little understanding on how grassroots organizing actually works. Anyway, everything fell apart. Uh, Anonymous for the Voice has lost the funding, partly because they weren't being transparent about their income. So of course, the next logical step would be like, we all go look at their financial filings that they are required by law to file uh, to the government of Australia to see what's up, except uh, they never filed them. They kept asking for and being granted deferments, which is their legal right to do so, right? But here we are in 2022 and their filings about their organization's financial situation from fiscal year 2019 to 2020, it's finally public. So uh, let's take a look. So AV's fiscal year ends on June 30th. So what we're looking at is the finances between June 30th, 2019 and June 30th, 2020, which means that this is before the falling out with the investor, but after some of that money started to pour in. And it should be noted that all dollar amounts here are going to be Australian, uh, unless otherwise stated. But if you want, you can head over to xe.com if you want to do the conversion or any of your favorite financial conversion sites. Not a sponsor, but it should be. Fred, can we get on XE? Let's get a little sponsorship going. All right, let's talk AV merchandise. They indicate that they sold a gross income of $189,000 worth of merchandise, netting about $115,000 of merchandise in, in, in one year. That's a whole lot of AV bamboo utensil sets, am I right? In 2019, they spent $10,000 on making the merch, but in 2020, they spent over $75,000 on making merchandise. I mean, you could argue it paid off because they raised 100, 150, whatever. So here's an interesting number. They spent $80,000 Australian dollars on touring and event costs. That's, that's over 60,000 US dollars spent just on traveling around for a year to do a cube or talking to vegans about how to talk to people while doing a cube. And, and keep in mind that for a third of that year, we were in COVID lockdowns. So that really only accounts for like eight months. It's like $10,000 a month to travel around and do cubes. Okay, so I know everyone is, is here for one thing. How much are they paying themselves to run anonymous for the voiceless? So here you go. In the fiscal year of 2020, they paid contractors over 853,000 Australian dollars. Now we can look at that like two ways, right? One, that money is being given out to AV organizers around the world. If that's the case, that sounds pretty good. Like, as you know, I'm not a big fan of the AV strategy. I think it's a failing one every single time. And if you're wondering what my thoughts are um, on the alternative, you can always check out this playlist. But if people are into it doing AV and they can get paid to do it, then I'm for that. Like, I'm not opposed to that. But the financial filings don't indicate how that's broken down. For instance, is it eight people getting paid $100,000 each to run Anonymous of the Voiceless? Is it 100 people getting $8,000 you know, every year to organize cubes? It's impossible to tell, except uh, for two people, Paul and Asal. They indicate that they each received $91,000 a year. Hang on, Fred, that's not, no? Okay, Fred is indicating that $91,000 is actually the average salary for an Australian nuclear engineer. It's actually 95, not 95,000. Oh, not 95,000 is the average income for an Australian veterinarian. Uh, 112,000, no, okay. $112,000 is the average salary for a CEO in Australia. No, Paul and, and Asal paid themselves $115,000 each as anonymous for the voiceless contractors, which included a $21,000 raise for both Paul and Asal for each of them. Now we can debate whether or not that's an appropriate amount. And again, I'm all for getting paid a livable wage to do our activism. And, and every place in the world has different averages for income and different averages for household incomes and, and all that. For instance, according to the Australian tax office, the median reported salary in Australia is $52,732. Paul and Asal make more than double the amount of the average income in Australia. 
Is it appropriate for a grassroots animal rights organization to be paying themselves more than double the median income? On their filings, they state that they have 239 volunteers with Anonymous for the Voiceless. Presumably, they could all be possible contractors as well. But is it ethical to pay 27% of the total money allocated to paying contractors and giving that just to two people? That's up to you. I can't wait for the discussions down below in the comments. They're going to be fantastic. But wait, there's more. In 2019, Paul and Asal started an official partnership outside of Anonymous for the Voiceless, complete with a bank account. Then, from what I can tell from these filings, Anonymous for the Voiceless dumped almost $400,000 into that bank account. Basically, Paul and Asal took $400,000 of AV's money and put it into a separate bank account controlled by Paul and Asal. Why? Who knows? It doesn't have to be reported on from what I can tell. It could be something totally benign and on the up or something scandalous or something in between. But all that is mentioned here is that AV loaned Paul and Asal close to $400,000. And that two years later, it was eventually repaid. We could speculate on a whole lot in regards to that, but we won't. But if you are involved in Anonymous for the Voiceless, this seems like something worth looking into because it's your volunteer work that gets those donations. It's your volunteer work that brings in that funding. It's your volunteer work that pays their salaries. And it's that funding that is, for whatever reason, being loaned to Paul and Asal in a separate partnership account. So there you have it. Personally, I think in order to build a strong movement and community, you need transparency. You need it in your leadership, in your strategies, and you need it in your finances. This builds trust, and you can't be successful without a community that trusts one another. And in this case, the lack of trust and lack of transparency on Anonymous for the Voiceless part cost them $1.5 million. And ultimately, that feels like the lesson that needs to be learned. So does this satisfy your curiosity? Does it add more skepticism? Do you simply not care either way? That's up to you to decide and feel free to debate down below. But in the meantime, let's make sure we all keep fighting.